Hey guys, what's up? This is Jordan Crook with TechCrunch, and I'm here with John Frankel, who is a partner and founder at FF Venture. Hi, John. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. So um, let's let's just get down to business. What is of interest to you right now? We, what what is what is piquing your interest as someone who kind of has a, a an all-seeing eye, I guess, on, on what's going on in the ecosystem? We're seeing a number of things that are exciting us. Um, we've made, I think seven investments in new companies since December 1st. So the pace of innovation we don't think is slowing. No, not at all. Um, we're not really seeing a Series A crunch, but let's not talk about that because that's <laughs> okay. talked about everywhere else. Um, we're seeing a lot of people who are taking you know, these little supercomputers we carry around with us and making them functional in everyday life. So companies that we've invested in, such as Appy Couple that help you plan your wedding, um, uh, companies such as MoveLine that allow you to plan your move, right. uh, companies like Voxy, um, all of these are New York companies that happens. Uh, Voxy that now has about two and a half million people learning English using wow. primarily their phone uh, as a way to, uh, to learn. Um, so we're seeing a, you know, a big move towards turning mobile into something really functional for people. I want to kind of get into uh wearables, things like um, Google Glass, and we've got a bunch of the smartwatches coming out, and then right. there's also like the, the quantified self portion of that, right, where you're like recording right. you know, your activity and stuff like that. How much do you think that these two things will kind of tie in together, right? Because for me, Google Glass or even an iWatch means like a different level of computing. It's even more intimate, right? It's always on your wrist or it's always on your head. It's right there. You're always computing and connecting. The thing that will make them feel comfortable is if the accuracy of the information they provide is 100% right. right. So we've all seen Terminator, and you imagine Google Glass is like Terminator, but how bad would it have been if the information was only 95% right? So I think they're willing to allow Siri to be a little bit inaccurate and put up with that frustration, but if it's something that they're wearing on their head, they're gonna want it to be right all the time to yeah. put up with the fact that it's ever present in their conversations and in their interactions with other people. So I wonder about that, but we'll, we'll, know, we'll know that soon. Um, with regard to quantified self, I think that over the next few years that's gonna move from fringe to mainstream. And I think it, it's not just sort of electronically measuring different things about you, mm -hmm. but comes down to really understanding your own DNA and uh, your own susceptibilities. I think it'll push into diets and the like. We invest in a company called Interaxon that has a headband called The Muse, mm -hmm. and you can check it out at getthemuse.com. Um, it reads your brainwaves. Like and that Apple's April Fool's joke, like mm -hmm. years ago? Yeah, you could read like it. the joke years ago, but it reads your brainwaves. And so, you know, they're opening up the API. They had a very successful uh, Indiegogo campaign, another portfolio company of ours. Is it going to allow people who are ADHD to get better control? Is it going to help people who um, want to meditate to be able to understand the quality and quantity? I meditated 6.4 hours last week. Right. That's better than Meditation my average at this. <laughs> and, uh, right, you know, because you you're quantifying things which right. weren't. Or maybe someone will write an API so that, you know, someone who um, uh, starts to fall asleep at the wheel gets notified that they're losing focus and concentration. I don't know. Right. And, and that intrigues me a lot. OK, so I want to switch gears just a little bit. Cool. Um, and talk to you about Apple, of all players, right? Okay. Apple's a, clearly a very important company. Um, in the entire ecosystem with regards to apps, very important. Um, and the reason that I bring up Apple is because to me, I've been noticing, and I want to get your, your opinion, I feel like Apple is turning into a, more of a reactionary company. And I don't want to like harp on the whole what would Steve Jobs have done kind of thing, but to me it seems like there's a lot of reaction happening. And one of the instances that I noticed that you might be able to comment on is the whole 500 pixels thing right. with Apple, right? So 500 pixels got pulled from the App Store because apparently it was too easy to search for explicit imagery. Right. right. And then, do you remember Vine launched mm -hmm. like a month later? And Vine had its issue, and it wasn't the same outcome. The 500px is a website with some of the most beautiful photography you've seen in the world, crowdsourced from around the world. Absolutely. And what happened was um, uh, Apple was concerned that there was porn on the site mm -hmm. uh, and that people could access it through the app. 
Well, firstly, there's no porn on site. There's nudity. Mm -hmm. but generally, people understand the difference between the two. Right. Uh, but the nudity is behind a click wall, which requires registration. Um, I personally think that Apple, if you look at the choreography, Apple asked um, 500px eventually to move to a 17 plus rating on the app before it was allowed back in the store. The following week, Vine moved to a 17 plus rating. They were never removed though. They were they, unfeatured. They were, they were unfeatured, they were not removed. Um, and then the following week, I believe Tumblr moved to a 17 plus rating. So I do wonder if you step back whether this was part of Apple's plan. I don't think it deserves it. Right. But, um, you know, because I think that the other sites actually do carry images that probably stretch into porn as opposed to mm -hmm. um, artistic nudity. Yeah. But uh, that's not my decision. It's Apple's. All right. So let's talk immigration to kind of round things out. It's been a big topic of late. Cool. Um, I mean, you guys have made some investments actually, right? So we invest in a company called Clearpath Immigration, which is at iClearpath.com. Um, and what they, the, you know, in the, the sort of A for B description is they're the turbo tax for immigration. Right. But what they're doing very simply is enabling people to complete immigration forms using a SaaS platform, often without a lawyer. Now let's look at some of the stats. There's 40 million immigrants in this country. Um, it's about 11 million undocumented immigrants. There's a big move to uh, introduce a startup visa. Other countries are taking advantage of that. We haven't. Um, Canada being an example, which has a much more open immigration policy for entrepreneurs. Uh, the H-1B visa program, which um, is launched, I think it was launched earlier this week. Um, there's 65,000 H-1B visas and 20,000 for Postgrads, you know, last year it took till June, July before all the applications came in, they were exhausted. It looks like they're going to be exhausted within a week. That hasn't happened since 2008. And so there's a massive shortage of engineering talent that could be met right. by people overseas. And these are people who've come to universities in the US, right. we've educated them, and then we kick them out. Right. And if you look at it, I think something like 40% of Fortune 500 companies were founded by immigrants. A lot of these forms, you can do it yourself, you can do right. it for a fraction of the cost, and there was a real opportunity to apply technology to enable people to do things simpler, in the same way Appy Couple enables people to do weddings simpler, MoveLine enables people to do their moves simpler. Um, you know, iClearPath allows people to uh, complete their immigration form simply. And I think, I think it's an important area generically. I think mean, it's important for people in the startup community to step up. And I believe Mayor Bloomberg actually is having a virtual sit-in or virtual write-in where he wants people on a given day to um, tweet and Facebook message their representatives to make them understand how important it is. And I think, um, I think it's kind of cool that we're using social media as a, yeah, in that yeah, kind of way. Yeah, totally. With like Sopa, Pippa, and all that stuff. It's, it's becoming a real thing. Yeah, it's power to the people. Totally. All right, well, thank you so much for coming out, John. Not I appreciate at all. it. Not at all. Thank you. All right, guys, that's it for John Frankel.